In the summer I turned pretty, you've got Belly, who's 15 years old, soon to be 16, and every single year she looks forward to one thing, going to her mom's friend's beach house for about two months. Her mom's friend, Susanna, is really a second mom to Belly. Not just Belly, but her older brother, Stephen, as well. But even though Susanna is like a second mom, her sons are not like second brothers. You've got Jeremiah. He's cool. He's 19, so a little older than Belly. And then Conrad. Ho oh, ho, what a dreamboat. He's an athletic freak because he played football. At least he did until he recently quit. There's definitely more to that story than meets the eye. But he's also a bad boy because he smokes. Marijuana. That's right. He gets high because he's cool. He's so cool, he carries a joint in his ear that's hidden by his floppy hair. I'm telling you, this kid is the one that your mom warns you about. A jawline that don't quit in those sad puppy dog eyes. And it makes Belly melt. She's had a crush on Conrad for years. The difference is Conrad and Jeremiah always kind of looked at her like a little sister. But this year, she's grown up. She doesn't look like a kid anymore. She's 15. She's coming in her own. And while she's sheepish to admit it, her best friend Taylor is not sheepish at all. Before Belly leaves for the summer beach house, Taylor begs her to bring some hot clothes. The problem is Belly doesn't really own any. That's when best friends come up clutch because Taylor sneaks her some hot stuff so that maybe if she ends up looking good, she can hook up with Conrad and fulfill that lifelong dream. She tries to remind Belly that she looks a lot different than last summer. And if she just puts in a little bit of effort, Conrad will see her like that. But Belly's not so sure. She does, however, get some affirmation when she stops off at the gas station right outside of Cousins Beach, and the gas station attendant hits on her. He asks her to the first bonfire of the summer. So she's definitely getting a lot more attention than she used to. They continue to drive to the beach house, and Laurel, their mom, gives both of them a speech on being really good guests. The thing is, Laurel's kind of insecure because Susanna's been her best friend for years, but Susanna's loaded, and Laurel, she's not. She's a divorcee for about a year now, and she's an author. While she's a successful one, she's just not rich, so she's a little insecure. She doesn't want her kids coming off as spoiled and taking advantage of Susanna and her generosity and kindness, even though these two families have been hanging out for years. When they finally do arrive at Susanna's beach house, Jeremiah is the first one to greet them, and he definitely noticed that Belly kind of got hot. Conrad, I mean, we don't know. He's definitely going through an emo phase for sure. And when he sees Belly, he does give her a smile, but he doesn't acknowledge it like Jeremiah did, who said, wow, look who came back all grown up. Unfortunately for Belly, while she does look a little bit grown up, they still look at her like a kid because they immediately grab her and throw her right into the pool. Belly ends up going into the house soaking wet, which Laurel is not a fan of at all, but Susanna doesn't really care. She's more enamored with the fact that Belly is growing up. She uses the term in bloom, which is weird as hell. Made me uncomfortable. But anyway, Laurel tells Belly that she should really call her dad because her dad misses the kids when they're away. And Belly says he'll see us at the end of the summer. But Laurel says, no, actually, he's coming for the fourth. Which obviously used to be a trend when the two were married. But Belly didn't expect that this year because he didn't come the year before. And Laurel says, well, yeah, we were newly divorced then, but now we're good. So it kind of just catches Belly completely off guard. She has a great relationship with her dad, but she just thinks it's weird that two divorced people are going to be in the same room and being cordial with each other. Belly then turns to Susanna and asks, where's Mr. Fisher? Mr. Fisher obviously being the husband. And Susanna brushes aside saying that he's in London at the moment. He's there for business. He'll be there later in the summer. And for now, it's just the women and the children. The two moms have to get going, though, and run some errands, which leaves Belly to go to the beach with Jeremiah. As those two have fun, Laurel has to stop off at the country club, which she doesn't really feel comfortable doing. But Susanna has to pick something up because Susanna is throwing her a party, which Laurel didn't ask for. Susanna kind of told her it was going to be a small get together with a few appetizers. And it's turning out to be bigger than that. They stop off at the local bookstore in town because Laurel recently wrote a book, which is the whole genesis of the party. 
And the bookstore is going to be where the party is held, so they're making sure that the store has enough books in stock to deal with the demand. As the workers kind of grill Laurel a little bit on the release of the book, the book tour, which didn't actually happen, you can tell from Laurel's reaction that this hasn't been the most successful book launch. She even calls it quiet. Susanna ends up walking over and interrupting this conversation by asking how many books they do have in stock, and the workers tell her, 20? And Susanna says, that's not enough. I invited half the town to this thing, which kind of gets Laurel upset. Susanna, however, doesn't even pay it any attention. They start focusing on the fact that the bookstore doesn't have enough of Laurel's book, but they have this one book clearly in stock. It's written by a guy called Cleveland Castillo, and when Laurel sees that name, she goes in. She starts ripping this guy to shreds, making fun of him, saying that he's probably got a fake name. But what she doesn't know is that this is the worst time to do that because Cleveland Castillo is literally in the bookstore. He's hearing every word of it. Turns out he's renting a beach house, and Laurel is mortified. Cleveland, though, he kind of took it in stride. The two then head home, they get ready for dinner, and it's the first dinner of the families. As they start making just general table talk, Stephen asks Conrad when he's leaving for football camp, and that's when Conrad says, yeah, I quit. And it's a new development because Susanna says he can go back at any time, but Conrad seems dead set on the fact that he's not going back. The conversation then delves into the fact that Stephen and Jeremiah are actually going to be working at the country club that summer. And that reminds Susanna that she actually got belly something from the country club. It's an invitation to be a debutante. It's an old school ceremony of when a girl comes of age, she's presented to society. I mean, we're talking straight Bridgerton stuff here, which, by the way, I have a recap for. I'll put a tab up there for you if you want that as well. Susanna looks at this as an opportunity for Belly to make some new friends, look beautiful, get dressed up, and also learning future skills like marketing yourself. But this doesn't really seem like Belly's thing. She's always kind of been a little bit of a tomboy. In fact, it seems like the only person at the table that doesn't think this thing is horrible is Susanna. Conrad makes mention that the whole debutante scene is ridiculous. It's just for sheep. And Susanna defends it, but the more she defends it, the more it sounds weird and uncomfortable. Seems like Belly's mind is made up. She is not going to be doing this thing until her mom calls her an alley cat. Not exactly a compliment, so Belly tells Susanna, I'll think about it. After dinner, Belly decides to go for a night swim, and as she's walking through the living room, her mom's asking her about social media followers. Her mom's not on social media, so she doesn't know the protocols of how many is a lot. And that's because she's looking up Cleveland Castillo. And Belly tells her, oh yeah, this guy, he's got a lot of followers. So Laurel's spending her night looking up the guy she was talking a whole lot of shit on. When Belly eventually does go outside, she sees that Conrad is already at the pool. And he's blazing up. It's the first chance for Belly to actually talk to Conrad all day. Just one-on-one. She points out that it was Conrad who not too long ago said that smoking was dumb. And that real athletes wouldn't do such a thing, but he just says, well, I said a lot of things. And also, I'm not an athlete anymore. But Belly says, yeah, I still think you should quit. And he says, what would you give me if I do? And while she wants to tell him the whole enchilada, she just says, nothing. I think you should quit for yourself. Conrad then changes the subject and asks Belly why she's even considering doing the debutante ball. Belly tells him, I'm not doing anything else. Conrad shakes his head and says, yeah, it's just not you. Don't let my mom control you just because she never had a daughter. Finally, Belly asks him, Conrad, what happened to you? You're different. You're not the same Conrad that I knew. And at first he acts like he hasn't changed, but it seems like he is about to explain something to her when both Jeremiah and Steven show up because they're about to leave for the first bonfire of the summer. It's the same bonfire that that kid from the gas station invited Belly to. Unfortunately, Belly's not allowed to go. But later on, when Belly goes back in the house, Taylor convinces her to go out. So Belly puts on one of Taylor's outfits. She sneaks out behind her mom's back, and she heads to the beach. And as soon as she gets there, the boy from the gas station comes up, and they start chit-chatting a little bit, but then Steven notices her. And Steven doesn't want his 15-year-old sister at the bonfire drinking around all these boys, so he tries to take her home. But Belly doesn't want to leave, especially when she sees Conrad hooking up with some random girl. Conrad was recently in a relationship, but he broke up with that girl, and apparently he rebounded with this one. And Belly demands to know who she is, 
And the girl, who's named Nicole, tells Belly, yeah, we met at the Deb Ball last year, which Belly is really shocked by because a couple hours ago, Conrad was telling her what crap the Deb Ball is. When Belly points this out, he just looks at her and says, you're such a brat. Stephen once again tries to get her in the car to go home, but he's calmed down by Jeremiah, who convinces Stephen to let her stay and just enjoy herself. It's not like Belly drinks, so there's no danger there. But she sits on the beach, and she's just not having fun. She's kind of wasting her time. And that's when a boy walks up who recognizes her. They both went to the same Latin convention in seventh grade. It sounds like fun. Boy, was it. She remembers it well. But they start chatting it up, and his name is actually Cameron. He lives in the area. And they have a little bit more than Latin in common. They both don't drink. They also both aren't rich. His mom works at the country club which means he grew up around a lot of them, and he didn't want to come, but he's pretty happy that Belly did because at least now he has a friendly face. He's even such a nice guy that when he notices Belly's cold, he gives her his hoodie. But their conversation gets interrupted when Belly notices that Conrad is getting into a fight with Gas Station Boy. Belly goes to break it up, and she gets an inadvertent elbow to the face. The whole party gets broken up because the cops show up a few seconds later. Belly heads to Steven's car to get inside and go home, but Cameron escorts her, and he tells her that he's interning on a whaling boat, it leaves at dawn, and he'd really like her to come. And she says, yeah, absolutely. And then before she gets in the car, she kisses him. She is absolutely cheesing. But the only people in the car are her and Conrad, because they're still waiting for Steven to show up, and that's when the cops beat them to the punch. The cops escort all the kids back home, and boy, Laurel is pissed that these kids got caught. At the end of the day, Laurel knows it's not that big of a deal, but at the same time, it is, because they're too young to be drinking. And when she's chastising them for getting caught, Conrad kind of talks back to her. She ends up asking Conrad, what is up with you lately? And he gives the same answer he gave Belly. Nothing. Belly, meanwhile, headed to her room. She excitedly texted Taylor about the kiss that she had. Fortunately, it's not with Conrad. It's with somebody else. But she wakes up super early in the morning, She checks yes on that debutante ball invitation, and then she heads to the beach where she finds Conrad, just staring off into space. They start talking about the previous night. Conrad pulls out a joint. Belly asks for it because she wants to take a hit. She's cool, but Conrad says, no, I'm not giving you weed. And she tells him, all right, well, then if I can't smoke, you can't smoke. And he puts it back. He invites her to go get some muffins, but she says, no, you know what? I got to get to a whaling ship because this year isn't going to be like the years before. Unfortunately, in episode two, you find out that Belly missed the boat. But when she gets back to the house, both her brother and Jeremiah are getting ready for their first days of work. Jeremiah is stressing a little bit because his mom wants to do these portraits of him and his brother, and he just doesn't want to do it. When Belly finally does walk in the room, Laurel right away notices that she's got kind of a black eye going, and she's concerned, but Belly lies it off and says, yeah, I knocked into somebody. Luckily, she doesn't have to deal with a cross-examination because Susanna runs into the room very excited because she found the card where Belly said she'd be a debutante. And everybody in the room is pretty surprised. Belly tries to play it off like it's not a big deal, but Susanna is very excited about this. She never had a daughter, so this is kind of her one opportunity. While she's excited about it, Laurel isn't. She tries to say how expensive it'll be, but it doesn't matter. Susanna's willing to pay for it, which... Kind of makes Laurel even more uncomfortable about the situation. She says, you know, Belly, do you even really want to do this? It doesn't really seem like it's you. And that's when Conrad decides to jump in, all hungover, and says, it's not her. They kind of just ignore that comment, though, and Susanna focuses on getting ready for this thing. All the shopping that it's going to take, the preparation. It sounds like you're planning for a mini prom. So all three women head off and they go looking for the proper attire, which includes a ridiculous looking hat. I'm starting to get on Conrad's side with this thing. Laurel continues, though, to be a party pooper about the situation. As they dress shop, at one point, Belly comes out and she's looking incredible. And Laurel says, yeah, but what about this dress, which is way more plain. And when Susanna points that out, Laurel says, yeah, but this is more Belly. As if Belly isn't standing right there with a voice of her own. They decide to go with the fancier dress. Meanwhile, as all three of them shop, the three boys kind of go their separate ways. Well, two of them are hanging out because they're working together. Jeremiah being a lifeguard at the country club and Stephen being a waiter. And in a way, they're shopping too. 
They're shopping for ass that summer. Jeremiah's hitting on everything that moves. Stephen, though, has his eyes set on one girl in particular. Her name's Shyla, and he met her at the bonfire, and boy, is he crushing hard on her. Jeremiah does warn him, though, do not get roped into going to this debutante ball. She's going to ask you, just say no, it's going to consume your entire summer. Later that day, though, Jeremiah ends up running into Belly, who gets dropped off at that country club for the first debutante event, and he doesn't even recognize her because she's so not Belly-like. He's wearing a dress, she's wearing one of those stupid hats, she's got these arm sleeves. He just wasn't prepared to see her in that form. Belly, though, doesn't really know where to go, so Jeremiah escorts her to the ballroom where all the girls are meeting. And it's pretty intimidating when Belly arrives because they're all kind of staring at her. She's fresh meat. No one recognizes her because she's not from the area. Paige, the woman running the event, comes over and tells Belly to take her seat at one of the tables. And when Belly does so, she recognizes a face. It's Nicole, the same girl that Conrad was hooking up with. And Belly's sitting right next to her. She's also sitting right next to Shyla as well. But there are a couple other girls at this table. There's a girl named Gigi who has a giant crush on Jeremiah. There's a girl named Marissa who's only doing this for college applications. There's another girl named Dara who seems a little bit more into it than the other girls. And then there's Belly, who's the youngest one. But all the girls, including Nicole, seem really, really nice to her. It appears like this is a far cry from Mean Girls. They do strike up a conversation, though, on how Belly is sort of like a sister to both Jeremiah and Conrad. That somehow segues into a conversation about Steven. Good thing for Belly is she doesn't really have to answer many questions because Paige starts talking, welcoming all the girls to the event. One of the things she points out is the fact that for the new girls, they have a mentor that's going to help them out with all of this. A girl that's been there before. She's done it. She knows what to expect. And she can kind of show her the ropes. For Belly, that girl is going to be Nicole. And while the relationship started off rocky, in the last 12 minutes, it's gotten way better. But as Nicole is starting to explain how the whole situation isn't as bad as it seems, Belly notices out the door that Cam has walked by. So she tells Nicole, I'm I'm sorry, I'll be right back. And she goes and rushes out. And the first thing she does is apologize for not making the boat that morning, which Cam's totally cool with. But they decide since they missed that opportunity, they would go to a drive-in movie that night. It's going to be the couple's first date. In fact, it's going to be Belly's first date ever. This means, though, Belly is going to miss her mom's party, a party that her mom doesn't even really want to go to. Her mom spent most of the day struggling with writer's block, and now she has to go celebrate a book that isn't really doing all that well. So she's a little bit uncomfortable. She's also really surprised when she finds out that Belly won't be attending because she is, in fact, going on a date. She could put a stop to it, though. She could force Belly to come, but she's not going to. She'll allow Belly to go off and hang out with a boy she met the other day. I should note that Cam is getting a big endorsement from Susanna, who knows his mother. So that might help things. Belly walks downstairs to go wait for Cam to pick her up, and all the boys are playing video games. When they turn around, they see Belly, they see what she's dressed in, And both Jeremiah and even Steven are very complimentary, but Conrad isn't. Conrad's playing this douche role very, very well. Now, they think that she's all dressed up for the party, but she says, no, I'm actually going to a drive-in movie. I've got a date tonight. And like Laurel, they're surprised, but they tell her, have a good time. A few minutes later, Cam picks Belly up, and they head to the drive-in. The boys, though, still will be heading to that party. Even though Laurel's uncomfortable at this party, she puts on a strong face. And she actually has a very surprising guest show up. Cleveland Castillo, the successful writer that she was ripping just a few days ago. He showed up, and not only did he show up, he read her book and he wants her to sign it. He starts asking questions about her book and his interpretation of it. And initially, Laurel's just kind of rude, but she ends up warming up a little bit more to Cleveland. She asks what he's doing there, and he's writing a novel on sailing. The thing is, he knows nothing about sailing. So Laurel, to help him out, says, oh, you see that boy over there who's drinking heavily? Yeah, he actually is a really good sailor, and she's talking about Conrad. So she calls him over. She introduces the two and explains the situation that Cleveland currently finds himself in, but Conrad isn't really receptive to giving out lessons because he thinks that Laurel was put up to this by his mom. While he was going through his portrait earlier in the day, his mom flat out told him, look, you got to get a job. 
not really liking who you become at the moment, and I need you to be a little bit more motivated this summer. So he thinks that this is a ploy by his mother to do what she wants. But in fact, it wasn't. It was just happenstance. And he ends up walking away, leaving a very befuddled Cleveland standing there in front of Laurel. Laurel, though, isn't the only one to get a surprising guest at her event. Belly also gets some surprising guests at her event, her date. The date started off normal, a little bit of get to know you. And the awkwardness is just flowing off the screen. Or I should say flowing out of the car. They clearly do like each other, though, so they do the whole inching their hands closer together to hold hands. But right as they're about to kiss, Belly gets some unexpected guests. Steven, Jeremiah, and Conrad roll up in the car right next to them. All three boys were trying to figure out what to do that night after the party, and they decided we're going to crash Belly's date. It was all Conrad's idea. So the three show up to kind of embarrass her, and as soon as they do, Belly tells Cam, hey, can you go get me a drink? And once he leaves the car, Belly rips into the boys. She tells all three of them they need to grow up, they need to get out of there. And she gives all three of them a death stare, demanding they leave until finally Conrad says, all right, let's get out of here. With the guys finally gone, Belly's date continues. They continue to talk about their interests. Cam is really into oceanography and marine life. And at the end of the date, they do end up finally hooking up. It's really adorable. For most of the boys, it's a quiet night, except for Steven. He gets a text from Shyla to meet him on the beach, and the two start hooking up. And that's when she asks him if he will be her date to the debutante ball. And look, she's on top of him. She's looking good. He's thinking with his little head. He says yes, but he is rewarded for it because she takes her shirt off and he likes that. So looks like all of Laurel's kids are getting some that night. Belly, though, is a little more tame. She just made out with Cameron. And after she says goodnight to him, she heads inside. And she's a little bit surprised because Conrad is waiting for her. And Belly gives him a whole lot of attitude when he asks how her date went. He tries to play it off like what they did was no big deal, but she thinks it's a huge deal. She makes him feel real small when she points out that his idea of fun on a Saturday night was busting up her date. She asks him, why couldn't you let me have this one thing? I mean, you know what you were doing. And he says, what was I doing? And she says, reminding me that you existed. You cared where I was. You cared who I was with. And he claims that he didn't, but it's hard to argue with Belly's logic. But the more that these two converse, and the more that they get into it, the more that Belly's crush is just evaporating. In episode 3, it is Belly's 16th birthday. She's had every birthday at Cousins, and it's always an awesome day for her. It's her favorite day of the year. But it's also a day where the boys have to treat her like a princess. So that's another reason that she enjoys it. All of them get her gifts. But this year, there was one person who claims that they forgot, and it was Conrad. Everybody's really, really surprised by this, and Belly says, it's okay. It's not like I expected anything anyway. But the reality is, she did expect something. Because Belly's birthday was something that was tough to forget. Conrad, though, quickly makes an excuse on the fact that he has to go help out Cleveland with this sailing thing, so he heads out. In order to get the vibes back to being good, Jeremiah suggests that He and Belly go and practice driving before they have to pick up Taylor because Taylor is coming into the area just for Belly's birthday later that day. And after the whole Conrad fiasco for the past 24 hours, Belly could certainly use the distraction. So she takes him up on the offer. During this driving lesson, he asks her if she's looking forward to Taylor coming in. And it just, by her reaction, doesn't seem like it. And she goes on to explain that Taylor is her best friend. But when Taylor's there, it's like, Taylor is the front and center show, and Belly's reverted to a side character. Taylor's Batman, Belly becomes Robin. So she's not really looking forward to that. But yeah, she's looking forward to Taylor showing up. Later that day, they go to pick up Taylor, and Taylor gets off the bus with a bunch of happy birthday balloons, and any bad feeling that Belly might have had about her best friend showing up suddenly went away. In fact, the first thing that Taylor does is compliment Belly on how hot she looks. But she also immediately starts flirting with Jeremiah. Before they head home, they stop off to get ice cream. Taylor gives Belly her birthday gift, which is a bikini, and then she asks what the plan is that night for Belly's birthday. And Belly says, well, Susanna always plans the big lobster dinner. But the first thing that Taylor does is shut it down and say, no, 
We're not doing that. It's your 16th birthday. Where's the party at? Jeremiah suggests that maybe they go to Nicole's because she's having a party that night, and all Taylor needed to hear was party. But she does ask, who's Nicole? And Belly starts going into the fact that Nicole is her big sister for the dead ball. She's like her mentor, and how cool she is, and all the awesome things that she's already done. And Taylor, once again, is very dismissive of this and just says, oh, all right, uh, let's go back to the house. As they were getting ice cream and picking up Taylor, Steven was busy having lunch with Shayla where they discuss plans on what to wear for the debutante ball. And Steven is so whipped at this point that this girl could have him wear a potato sack and he'd be cool with it. Even after she suggests that they go to this swank boutique where they could get matching outfits. And when she shows him the idea that she was thinking of, and he sees a $4,000 price tag, he doesn't scoff at it because he doesn't want to lose her. But he also needs to figure out where he's getting $4,000 Because the money he was going to make that summer, he planned to use to not have to live at home. After the lunch, though, he heads back to the house. He meets up with the girls, Jeremiah. They start having fun. They decide to play a game of chicken, but it gets interrupted when Nicole comes over with Conrad. Belly introduces Taylor to Nicole, but it's a little bit awkward, but she doesn't really think much of it. And then the foursome start playing volleyball in the pool. And everybody seems to be having a really good time until Taylor smashes the ball, and it hits Nicole right in the face. And the first thing that Belly does is apologize to Nicole and make sure that she's okay. It makes Taylor feel really awkward about the situation as Taylor claims that it was an accident and she didn't mean it. But her tone doesn't really add up to the words she's saying. The good thing is Nicole doesn't really seem phased by it. She assures the group to just keep playing on. And Conrad escorts Nicole inside to check up on her, get her some ice, make sure she's not too hurt. Nicole, however, clearly wants to hook up with Conrad. Don't blame her. I mean, they're sitting on his bed. But he actually turns away from her. And maybe it was because he got a text message. But when he gets that text message and he reads it, he immediately tells Nicole, I'm sorry, I gotta go. And he does have a good excuse. He actually has been helping Cleveland with this sailing situation. But Cleveland is going on national TV to discuss his upcoming book. And he wanted Conrad to help him prep with that just so he didn't sound like an idiot. The thing is, Conrad completely forgot. So Conrad flies out of the house to get to the bookstore in time to hopefully help out Cleveland, but unfortunately, he's too late. On his way into the bookstore, he does run by his mother and Laurel, and suddenly Laurel is seeing Cleveland in a whole new light because he's shaved. He's not looking so hipster-ish. She did really enjoy his book. She flew through it in a day. They start talking about how maybe Cleveland could be her rebound after the divorce. After the two watch a little bit of the interview, they head back to the house to start prepping for Belly's lobster dinner. Conrad's actually helping with this. He's shucking corn. But as he's doing so, he's doing it outside. And Susanna and Laurel are working inside, and they start talking about just how weird Conrad has been really this entire time they've been there. And the fact that he forgot Belly's birthday is kind of a big deal. And Susanna says, yeah, he's been like this since April when him and his girlfriend broke up. And while Susanna does brush it off, she is concerned because she asks Laurel, do you think you can talk to him? Yeah, it might open up to you more than his mom. So Laurel says, yeah, of course, because after all, Laurel is like a second mom to him. A few seconds later, she heads outside and Laurel really tries to get Conrad to open up. She tells him how he still means a lot to her and he can talk to her about anything. But all he does is say thank you. Laurel doesn't give up, though. She tells him, you know, you don't have to hold everything in all the time. And it seems like Conrad is about to open up to her, but she cuts him off and says, it's been a while since I was your age, but I do remember what it's like to get my heart broken. And Conrad, realizing that that's what she was referring to, just plays along with it and goes, oh, yeah, that sucks. Thanks. Laurel then heads inside to continue to prepare for this lobster dinner. And later that night, the dinner happens. The only surprise guest is Cam. And the boys try to break him. The boys try to make him feel awkward as hell. It starts with the fact that he's a vegetarian and Belly is not. Then it's embarrassing stories about Belly. But Cam is unflappable. After the dinner, all the kids head up to get ready to go out to Nicole's that night for the party. And Belly's a little nervous because the last party she went to did not go well and she kind of embarrassed herself. But Taylor, trying to make her feel better, reminds her that she was there for about 20 minutes. It does not count. And this time, Taylor will be there right by her side. 
A few minutes later, Taylor and Belly are picked up by Cam to head to the party where Stephen, Conrad, and Jeremiah arrived a little bit earlier. They're immediately greeted by Nicole, who gives Belly a big hug. And Nicole kind of whisks Belly away to go show Gigi and the rest of the debutante ball girls the flower crown that Susanna made them for the lobster dinner. They decided to wear them to the party. The thing is, it leaves Taylor alone in this house where she really doesn't know many people. So Taylor decides to go grab a drink and kind of wander about. Belly, though, is focused on the fact that Nicole was nice enough to get a bunch of cakes and throw her a mini birthday party. It was a super nice gesture for somebody that she doesn't really know all that well. A big topic of conversation with the debutante ball girls, though, is who's everybody asking to the ball. And Belly is planning on asking Cam later that night. A little while later, though, when the conversation between the debutante ball girls dies down, Belly does end up linking back up with Cam, and they're sitting on the couch. They're kind of just enjoying the ambiance. When Jeremiah decides to grab the microphone and do a little impromptu karaoke to celebrate Belly's birthday. And he gets some background vocals from all the Deb girls. They all serenade her with Tell Me More from Greece. I think. I think it's from Greece. Admittedly, I've never seen it. Anyway, Cam gets really into it. Jeremiah gets really into it. Everybody's enjoying it. And it's not like Belly isn't enjoying it. She just gets tired of it. So she walks around and go find Taylor. Starts going upstairs, looking in bedrooms, and eventually she finds a bedroom with Taylor's flower crown. When she opens it even more, she is shocked to see that Taylor and Steven are hooking up. Belly is absolutely disgusted. Steven runs out of the room. He's shocked at his actions. After all, he really does like Shayla. And it leaves both Belly and Taylor to figure out the situation. And Taylor tells Belly, I'm sorry, it kind of just happened. But Belly isn't accepting that. She tries to remind Taylor that Steven is dating somebody, somebody he actually likes. But Taylor takes that as an insult, saying, what, he couldn't like somebody like me? This sparks a giant argument between the two. You've got Taylor saying that she doesn't even know who Belly is anymore, and Belly saying that's because she's finally sticking up for herself and not doing the things that Taylor just wants to do. Belly feels like Taylor acted out to get back at her. That's the only reason she hooked up with Steven. And Taylor shoots back, that's not true at all. You know, you play the victim, but you're actually extremely self-absorbed. I mean, we're best friends, and how did you not know I've had a crush on your brother forever? I mean, if you weren't so obsessed with Conrad. And Belly tries to get her to quiet down because she's worried about people hearing, but Taylor yells, who cares? There's more than one story happening here, but you don't seem to notice it. Belly, though, just shakes her head. She tells Taylor, I can't deal with this right now, and she leaves the room. She goes downstairs to find Cam. And he's playing beer pong with Jeremiah. I mean, they're, they're tearing it up. But when Belly asks to leave, Cam says, yeah, sure, no problem. There is one thing, though, that's been on Cam's mind. So he asks Belly, are, are you into Jeremiah? And Belly, who's never been into Jeremiah, she's been into his brother, says, wait, are you talking about Conrad? And Cam says, wait, no, Je- Jeremiah, I got a vibe from you guys. But Belly just brushes that aside and says, no, no, Jeremiah flirts with everybody. Belly then changes the topic because she's about to ask Cam to the dead ball but she freezes, and she can't do it. He then drives her home to put an end to a very awkward, uncomfortable night. And when she gets up the next morning, Jeremiah's in the kitchen, and she still has yet to talk to Taylor. In fact, Taylor is upstairs at the moment packing to go back home, and Belly still has yet to say a word to her. She asked Jeremiah if it would be cool if they go on a muffin run, and he says, yeah, just go to Conrad's room and grab his car keys. He's not here right now. So Belly heads inside. She starts opening some drawers to try to find his keys. And while she does eventually find the keys, she finds something else. It's a necklace from Conrad, the infinity sign. This is clearly for Belly. It is clearly her birthday present. Conrad did not forget. It's a throwback to when Belly was a kid. Conrad was the one who taught Belly about the infinity sign. But since Conrad didn't actually give it to her yet, She just packs it up and puts it back in the drawer she found it in. She then heads downstairs. She throws Jeremiah the keys and the two head off to go get muffins. But during the ride, she tells Jeremiah, I just don't get your brother this summer. Dude's been acting weird since I got here. And Jeremiah doesn't seem phased by it. He says he's been acting weird for months. Just don't let it bother you. He tries to get the topic back to Cam and how he actually really likes Cam and he feels bad about trying to make things uncomfortable, but he's a really good guy. But Belly once again gets the conversation back to Conrad. And Jeremiah just laughs and says, you know, last night you were obsessed with Cam and now you can't stop talking about Conrad. 
she realizes that he is right in this situation. So she starts asking about how his night went. And Jeremiah is bi, so that night he hooked up with a guy and things went really, really well. When they do arrive back at the house from the muffin run, it's time to go take Taylor to the bus. And still, Belly and Taylor aren't on speaking terms. But finally, Laurel steps in and tells Belly as they're waiting to watch Taylor get on the bus, would you go talk to her? She's your best friend. She came out here for you. So Belly reluctantly gets out of the car, and she says goodbye to Taylor. Taylor, though, does apologize for her actions the previous night. She tells Belly that what happened between her and Steven won't happen again. And Belly says, I'm not mad. I'm just weirded out. The two, though, do leave on good terms, and Belly gets back in the car. And her mom breaks it down for her, pretty simply, that boys are going to come and go. But best friends, they're going to last a lifetime. So you can't mess that up. In the end, you just don't know what the future's going to hold. Now that Belly has addressed the situation with Taylor, she needs to address it with Steven. And when she gets back to the house, she confronts him about what happened. And she does so in a joking way, because in the end, as she told Taylor, she's not really mad at it. She's just more shocked but she does think that what steven's doing to shayla is messed up because she can tell that shayla really does like him and steven knows he messed up but he says to belly i'm just kind of insecure about the situation i feel like she's more into guys that were at the party last night you know guys that really aren't like me and because of that insecurity he ended up hooking up with taylor but he doesn't plan on doing it anymore well belly and steven were discussing the matter When Laurel got back home, her and Susanna went to the beach. They were just kind of enjoying the night. And Laurel tells Susanna, you know, last night I was doing some research on alternative therapies. But Susanna shuts it down. She says, Laurel, I'm not doing that again. I'm not going through chemo again. I know how much time I have left. And it's okay. I'm at peace with it. I'm going to tell the kids when we get back to Boston. I just want one last good summer in Cousins. In episode four, it is the 4th of July on Cousins, which is a really big deal. But it's also a big deal this year because it's supposed to be when all the dads are coming back. Unfortunately, for some of the kids, they're not looking forward to that. Belly is certainly not looking forward to meeting her dad's new girlfriend. Steven can't quite figure it out why their mom even invited her in the first place. And Conrad is definitely not looking forward to his dad showing up. Conrad, though, gets really good news early on when Susanna tells everybody that their dad is not coming. He got held up in London for work. And Jeremiah is disappointed, but Conrad is pumped. His entire mood changes. He goes from emo Conrad to happy Conrad. He starts helping Belly make the bed in the guest room, and Belly's crush quickly returns. Later in the day, Belly's dad arrives in Cousins with his girlfriend, Victoria, who is a little bit younger than him. She's 27. She's in grad school. She seems nice enough, but Belly doesn't really want to give her all that much of a chance. The boys, though, want to give her a chance because she's attractive, I guess. She's not really my type, but she's not ugly at all. So at the very least, they want to give Belly's dad, Adam, a high five because that's cool. But the fact that Adam has rebounded with such a younger girl does make Laurel a little uncomfortable. It's hard not to compare yourself to the replacement. Susanna, though, being a really good friend, tries to remind her that Laurel is always going to be better than whoever this new girl is. But Victoria is nothing but nice when she arrives. She's very, very nice, very complimentary, very cordial, very appreciative for being invited. After the initial hellos and pleasantries, they get ready for the party that they're going to have. It's not just going to be them. The debutante girls are also invited over, so... You've got Nicole, you've got Gigi, you've got Cam, and you've also got Shayla. And this is going to be the first opportunity for the parents to meet Shayla, i.e. for Laurel to approve of Shayla. And boy, does she, because Shayla conducts herself wonderfully. When Shayla walks out of earshot after initially meeting Stephen's parents, Laurel says, I like her. She's confident. She knows who she is. I'm surprised a girl like that would even want a Deb. And while Shayla wasn't in earshot of that compliment, Belly was in earshot of it and takes offense to it. So when Adam asks Belly, "Ah, tell me about this dead ball, Belly says, well, apparently it's for girls like me, girls who don't know who they are. And Laurel quickly apologizes because she didn't mean it like that. But before the situation gets out of hand, Victoria asks Belly if she can show her where the bathroom is. So they head inside. Once Victoria is done going to the bathroom, though, she starts whipping up some pomegranate margaritas. 
She does so in front of Belly and Jeremiah. She's telling them how she got the recipe. And when they ask her, hey, can we have some? She asks, well, are your parents cool with that? And of course they lie and say yes. And when they try the pomegranate margarita, they are in love. When Victoria leaves, they start whipping up some of their own. And at this point, Conrad has come in, so he's helping out. While they're blending them up, Conrad says, you know what I miss? How Laurel would just put dad in his place, you know? She'd walk in and she'd say, Adam. But then they literally hear Laurel say, Adam, because Conrad and everybody was unaware that their dad actually is showing up for the fourth. And Conrad's mood once again changes back to emo Conrad. Conrad just walks away. But Conrad is not the only one who is shocked and doesn't really want to see Adam too much. The other person is Susanna, who gives off a very weird vibe when she sees Adam in her kitchen. She tries to play it off like it's okay, but you can tell she's a little bit shook. When everybody leaves the kitchen, she demands to know what he's doing there, and he says, well, Laurel called me and said, get your ass here. So I did. But he realizes very, very quickly that Susanna had no idea Laurel was doing that. Now that he's here, though, he's not going to leave. Susanna doesn't want to ruin the fourth for the kids. So she says, we'll just make the best of it. Well, the adults do try to make the best of the awkward situation that they find themselves in. All the teenagers head to the beach with Belly's pomegranate margaritas, and they start drinking heavily. Everybody except Cam. Cam doesn't drink. It doesn't really take too long for most of the kids to end up drunk. But they all seem like a happy drunk, including Belly, who is sloshed. But after about an hour, everybody heads back to the house. And when they do, the awkwardness between Conrad and his dad is still evident. I mean, it is very apparent to anybody that watches the two interact with each other. And it just seems like it's very much a one-way street. Adam, the dad, trying to make inroads with Conrad, and Conrad just blowing him off every step of the way. It actually gets to the point where Jeremiah has to pull Conrad aside and say, look, whatever your beef is with dad, squash it. Because he's clearly trying, and you're clearly being a dick. Meanwhile, the girls were hanging out on the dock, just gossiping, talking about their different love life situations. Nicole still isn't really sure that Conrad is into her. He kind of gives off some mixed signals. And then drunk Belly ruins everything. A compliment about Belly's attire goes into Taylor, and then goes into how Taylor is very much like Shayla, and how it makes sense that the two would crush on the same boy in the same summer. And Shayla's kind of confused about what that comment would mean, And Belly says, look, what happened between those two? It didn't mean anything. He's really into you. So drunk Belly's big mouth just possibly ruined her brother's blossoming relationship. Suddenly, Shayla doesn't really feel like staying. And drunk Belly can't quite figure out why. But as Gigi, Shayla, and Nicole are leaving, Steven notices. He runs out to see why exactly they're leaving. And that gives Shayla a one-on-one opportunity to tell Steven that she knows that Steven and Taylor hooked up. And honestly, it's fine because her and Steven weren't exclusive anyway. And Steven doesn't really know how to feel about that. Obviously, he's disappointed in his actions, but he's also disappointed in her response. Like, their relationship didn't mean anything. Especially when she says, we're just having fun, right? Nothing serious? Because he wants it to be serious. So as the girls get in the Uber, he's standing there pretty perplexed. Somehow, even after all of this, Drunk Belly continues to walk around with two giant margaritas and no one's stopping her. She stumbles up on Conrad, who's in the outdoor shower, trying to clean up, and she is liking what she sees. She starts hitting on Conrad, and it's so evident that Conrad actually asks her, how many of those margaritas have you had? But she brushes the question aside and asks, did you buy me that infinity necklace for my birthday? And he doesn't say anything. He's shocked that she knows about it. And she starts laughing, saying, I knew it. I knew you bought it for me for my birthday. But he just tells her to get the hell out of there and let him finish up his shower. Once she does get back inside, finally, an adult notices that 16-year-old Belly is walking around like she's a server at Chili's. Her mom asks her, who told you you could have a margarita? And Belly throws Victoria right under the bus. Belly, though, shows how drunk she truly is. When Susanna grabs a cake to bring outside for the party, And Belly trips on the steps, knocks Susanna over, the cake is ruined, and so is her mother's cake stand. At that point, the adults have to take Belly inside to sober up a little bit and lay down. But Belly being drunk is kind of secondary to Susanna's reaction once she did fall. 
Because Adam came over to help her out, but she was very dismissive of any help whatsoever from Adam. Laurel, knowing that she messed up at this point by even inviting Adam, has to find out what's going on. So she corners her best friend in one of the bedrooms and says, all right, spill it. What's the deal between you and Adam? And initially, Susanna doesn't really want to answer her questions, but finally she reveals that Adam cheated on her three years ago when she was initially going through chemo with his secretary. Laurel can't figure out why Susanna didn't tell her in the first place, and Susanna says, because you would have told me to leave him. And at the time, I didn't want to, but now I do. If I'm dying, I don't want that guy by my side. This starts a little bit of a fight between the two, because Laurel feels like Susanna's being very short-sighted. She's about to die. She's going to have doctor's appointments. She's going to be frail. And she's going to be doing all of this alone. While trying to take care of two boys? She feels like Susanna should welcome Adam's overtures. But Susanna just can't believe that this is Laurel's reaction. Then again, she can believe it. Because as she says to Laurel, you always felt like you knew what was right for me. And when Laurel says, you know, I'm going to have to be the one to clean all this up, Susanna very calmly says, well, nothing will make you happier. To which Laurel gives a big F you and walks out of the room. Laurel is so upset by this conversation that she just has to get out of the house. She heads to the closest bar. She starts drinking. And as it turns out, she's not the most famous writer in the bar. Yeah, Cleveland Castillo also decides to visit that bar. Since Misery kind of loves company, the two start drinking together. They start talking about their profession. One thing leads to another, and they end up banging in a Honda Accord. While Laurel was trying to get drunk and railed by Cousin's version of Ernest Hemingway, Conrad was back at the house, and he decided to heed the advice of his brother and give his dad a little bit of a chance. But when he walks up to his dad to talk to him, his dad just starts going in on him. Because Conrad's the oldest kid, and he's disappointed that Conrad wasn't looking out for Belly. And the truth is, the situation with Belly isn't Conrad's fault. He had no idea she was drinking that much. So Conrad just shakes his head and says, I don't know why, but I thought I could talk to you. And walks off. This is kind of the final straw for Adam. He decides to start packing up his bags, and he leaves later that night. Yeah, this has been a bad day for both romantic and personal relationships. Everybody not named Cleveland Castillo has been going through something bad. But Steven isn't willing to just let his possible relationship go by the wayside. He decides to do something about it. He heads to Shyla's house and he finds her outside. And he says, look, I don't want to be just a fling. Look, I I messed up, but I don't want to be with anybody else. And Shayla feels the exact same way. So at least one relationship is proverbially sobering up. So is Belly. Her dad comes in and he doesn't criticize her at all for getting drunk. He's been there before. They start talking about the relationship between her dad and her mom. And now her dad is always going to love her mom. It's just they grew apart in separate ways. And that has Belly asking, well, where is mom right now? And he says, Susanna and her got in a fight, but they're best friends. They'll patch it up. So Belly heads downstairs to grab a snack. And when she's eating it, her mom walks in with sex hair. And just like her dad, her mom doesn't criticize her for what she did. Everybody who was 16 once. They start talking about relationships and how do you know that you want to be with somebody? How do you know that you have fireworks for that person? And her mom says, you just kind of know. And Belly's asking because she still has feelings for Conrad. She walks outside and Conrad is just sitting on the gazebo watching the fireworks so she decides to join him. She feels like Conrad probably is mad at her, but he looks at her and says, who could ever hate you? She laughs, and then she lets Conrad know that she's pretty sure her mom just got laid. So they have a good chuckle about that. There's a little bit of an awkward pause, and then Conrad says, Belly, about the necklace. I did get it for you, and I don't know why I didn't give it to you. I got embarrassed, I guess. When Belly asks why, he says, Belly, you don't know the effect you have on people. And Belly says, I don't know what you're talking about. And Conrad tells her, oh, yes, you do. Then he leans in. But right before they kiss, a firework goes off and scares them. But that firework wasn't just a coincidence. That firework woke them up out of what they were going to do, but it was done so because Jeremiah walked outside, he saw what was about to happen, and he put a stop to it. The day after the 4th of July, Belly has to head over to the club because she has debutante waltz practice. It sounds as exciting as... It, it, it sound, yeah, it doesn't sound exciting. It's not exciting, folks. It's not. 
One of the issues, though, is that Belly doesn't have a partner because she meant to ask Cam to be her escort, but she didn't because she got too drunk. So she's stuck at the moment. And Nicole fills in being her mentor. So while everyone's dancing with their dates, it's Nicole and Belly. As they're dancing, Nicole mentions how Connor had left her on red the previous night. She's a little concerned. Those mixed signals, he's still giving them off. And Belly has a pretty good idea of why she was left on red. Connor had almost kissed her, but she doesn't tell Nicole that. She just says, yeah, he was sleeping. And it is true, at one point Conrad did go to bed. But as Belly and Nicole are dancing at the club, Conrad wakes up. And he gets really happy because he has a text, not from Nicole, but from Belly, saying good morning. And he can't wait to see her. He's actually disappointed when he finds out that she is at the club and he can't see her at the moment. But he's in a really, really good mood. It's something that Jeremiah notices. Now the thing about the previous night is that Conrad knew that it was Jeremiah who shot that firework off. But Jeremiah claims it was an accident, and Conrad believes it. There's no reason he wouldn't. But Jeremiah starts prodding for information on what Belly and Conrad were talking about down in the gazebo. And Conrad doesn't give him any information. Jeremiah probably would prod for more, but he's got to get over to the club because he's running late for his shift. And as soon as he gets there, the first place he goes isn't to the pool. It's to the ballroom, where he sees Belly dancing with Nicole, and he decides to be her date for the moment. He steps in, he starts dancing with her, but then he gets everybody's attention when he changes the music up, and he starts dancing seductively. Those hips are moving so aggressive that a few of those girls might have gotten pregnant just by watching. Even the ballroom dance teacher can't help but admire his curvatures. Unfortunately, it is short-lived. Paige comes back, she puts an end to it, and she sends Jeremiah back to the pool. As Jeremiah is leaving, his brother just happens to be arriving. His brother wasn't about to just sit there and wait to see Belly when she got back. He wanted to see her that morning, and when he found out she was at the club, he drove over. It does get a little awkward, though. When he arrives, he kind of hangs back in the shadows, and he does wave at Belly, but Nicole happens to be in front of Belly, and Nicole thinks that the wave is for her. Even Belly thinks that the wave might be for Nicole. But she finds out seconds later that, no, that wave was meant for her when she gets a text from Conrad saying, I'll see you when you get back to the house. Conrad probably would have stayed around, but he has to go help Cleveland with sailing. As those two get out on the ocean, they start chatting about relationships. Because just like Jeremiah, he's noticed that Conrad is in a better mood that day. And he probably figures it's about a girl, so he's willing to give him any advice that he's got. Conrad, though, is a little dismissive because Cleveland's old. What does he know about relationships? And Cleveland lets him know that he does just fine. In fact, he's thinking about texting a memorable woman from the previous night. At this point, Cleveland has no idea that Conrad is crushing on Laurel's daughter. And Conrad has no idea that Cleveland slept with Belly's mom. But when Cleveland lets it slip that it is a divorcee who is also an author, it's not hard to figure out who it is. So while Cleveland is kind of hemming and hawing about what to do, whether to text her or not, Conrad says, text her. She's probably just hanging out with my mom anyway. So Cleveland heeds that advice. He texts her, hey, when can I see you again? And Conrad was right. Laurel and Susanna are just hanging by the pool. They've at this point made up. Laurel lets Susanna in on the fact that she had sex with Cleveland the previous morning. And then she gets the text message, so it's perfect timing. Laurel isn't quite sure how to respond to Cleveland's text. So Susanna decides, let's just get some motivation from edibles, and the two women get high. They have to hide their stash, though, from Belly when she comes home and wants to know where Conrad is. At that point, it's all she's really thinking about. What she wasn't planning on was the fact that Cam decided to stop by and see if she wanted to go for a walk on the beach. And Belly says, sure. With Conrad not around, it's not like she has anything else going on. So as the THC hits the older women, Belly and Cam head off. They get to a really nice part of the beach. They start kind of chatting a little bit. They enjoy lunch. And Belly knows that for her, she could have fun all summer doing this. She does like Cam. The problem is, as she's doing it, she wishes she was doing it with Conrad. She knows it's not fair to Cam to put him through this, so she decides to break things off. And he had a pretty good idea that it was happening. I mean, after all, she didn't ask him to be the escort to the debutante ball. He's not too upset about it. But he is disappointed. 
Belly heads back to the house where Jeremiah is actually waiting for her. While he had worked that day, he spent the majority of it trying to push his brother to the side in the battle for Belly. When he overheard Nicole and Shayla talking about this music festival, he decided to intervene and say that Conrad was a big fan of one of the artists and that Nicole should definitely take him. He also stuck up for her big time when some of the other debutante ball girls started to make fun of how Belly danced in heels. However, he still isn't letting on about the fact that he has feelings for Belly to Belly. He's just acting business as usual. Now, when Belly gets home and she sees Jeremiah, the first thing he wants to do is show her the fact that their moms are stoned out of their gourd. I mean, Laurel is so out of it that she gets Belly's advice on the text from Cleveland and reveals to Belly that she slept with Cleveland the previous night. Kind of just happened. Something that Belly doesn't even want to think about. And it's not like Susanna's any better. She goes to paint Jeremiah in a portrait, but that portrait looks, it looks bad. I mean, it's, it's not good. And after the failed portrait, the two moms decide to go walk on the beach and just laugh it up. With the house empty and the only people in it being Jeremiah and Belly, Jeremiah wants to spend more time with Belly. He asks her if she wants to go swim. But Belly has to shut him down because she's got to clean her room. And she's still not picking up on the fact that Jeremiah is flirting with her because Jeremiah flirts with everybody. The thing is, Belly doesn't clean her room. Belly prepares herself for Conrad arriving later that day. She wants to make sure she looks good. And when she hears him arrive, she excitedly goes downstairs. But Conrad's being a little weird. He's acting like they didn't kiss the previous day. She decides to speed the process along by letting him know that she broke up with Cam. And when he asks why, she says, because we almost kissed. And he plays it off like he doesn't remember it, like he was drunk. Even though he definitely remembers it. And he wasn't drunk. And if if he was, he wasn't that drunk. When he turns around and he sees Belly's face, he knows that he's not going to be able to just weasel his way out of this conversation. So he explains to her, Belly, I think about you a lot. I do like you, but... I I can't. This hurts Belly deeply, but she stays strong. She tells Conrad, I'm not waiting for you anymore. And then she heads upstairs and cries in her room. She needs a friend in that moment. The person she really needs is Taylor. She really wishes Taylor was there for her at that moment. While Taylor's not, she FaceTimes her. And Taylor, being a good friend, picks up and is willing to listen. While Belly's having an awful day romantically, Her mom and Susanna are still having fun. They found a beach bar. They go to it. They continue the party by drinking. Susanna hooks up with a guy. And Laurel finally texts Cleveland back, why don't we just hang out now? So he picks her up. He takes her to this private lake where they skinny dip and they hook up, which is a big deal for Laurel. It's one thing to have sex in the car. He can't really see her. But when you skinny dip, you see all the nooks and crannies. But Cleveland, he's into it. So you could say it was a really good day for Laurel. And it also wasn't that bad of a day for Steven. Steven got a bit of a promotion. Thanks to Adam, who put in a good word for him at the club, he got bumped up to being the server at the private card game in the club, which comes with big tips. And at first, Steven's loving it. He gives some poker advice to one of the guys. Steven completely lucks out, but it makes him look good. But then he sees the dirty side of it. The fact that these guys will never respect him. That they look down on him. They say some racist stuff. And it has Steven thinking, am I even built for this? But then, well, then Steven sees how much money he gets for it. And he thinks, oh, okay, maybe I can put up with their bullshit. After the morning card game, he and Shayla headed out to lunch where he was able to pay with the money he earned from the card game. But he just so happens to run into the son of one of the guys from the card game. Shayla introduces the two. And the kid says, yeah, you know, my dad was mentioning that this busboy was like a poker savant. Is that you? And Steven excitedly says, yeah, I guess so. And the kid, whose name's Trevor, invites him to their private poker game. It's not as high stakes, but they're always looking for more people. And Steven says, yeah, sure, I'd I'd love to. So things are looking up for Steven. Back at the house, though, Steven's sister has this routine. She always goes for a nighttime swim in the pool. Jeremiah knows this. That's where Jeremiah decides to make his move. He got word earlier that Conrad was probably going to that music festival, so he figured it was pretty safe, and he jumps in the pool with Belly. 
He tells her that he's always had feelings for her, but for the longest time it was always Conrad. And this summer it was Cam. But now that they both seem to have gone by the wayside, he feels like it's his turn. And the two end up hooking up right there in the pool. In episode six, there's a big volleyball tournament that's being held, and it's a part of the debutante ball, but the volleyball tournament's really run by Susanna because it's for her charity. All the girls get broken up into teams of two. They represent a charity, and if they win the whole thing, then their donations get doubled. And for Belly, that's a big deal. I mean, suddenly her competitive streak has come out big time. She is dead set on winning this whole thing, and her partner is going to be Taylor. But before the tournament, she wakes up, she showers, and as she's coming out, she runs into Jeremiah, and it's a little bit awkward. Because the previous night, she wasn't dreaming about Jeremiah, she was dreaming about his brother Conrad. They make general conversation, but eventually Jeremiah says, yeah, I do want to talk to you about what happened the other night. But, you know, not now, obviously. And Belly is very okay with that. While Belly gets ready, Conrad heads to go work with Cleveland. And boy, is he on edge. At first, Cleveland definitely notices that Conrad's on edge. He mentions it, but Conrad doesn't calm down. Cleveland tries to talk him down from this, but Conrad gets more and more emotional until finally he has his first panic attack. And Cleveland recognizes it because he's had him before. When he does eventually settle down, Conrad reveals to Cleveland that he knows his mom's dying. He just doesn't know how to bring it up to her. That's the thing that's been eating at him this entire time. He wants to tell her, but he also knows that there's a reason why she hasn't told him and Jeremiah. So he figures that if he just keeps it inside and continues to play dumb, it'll keep her alive even longer. And Cleveland's advice to him is, Conrad, this isn't on you. If you say it out loud, it's not going to change things. Because it's happening either way. But it's definitely not your fault. And you can't control it. When Conrad returns home that day, he definitely is in a much better, calmer mood. First person he sees is Belly getting ready for the tournament. He starts to make chit-chat with her. Belly kind of starts to blow him off until finally he apologizes for the other night. He admits to her that he remembered everything. He remembered almost kissing her. And in fact, he's been playing it over and over and over in his head. Belly says... I'm not sure quite what to say, and Conrad understands. And then he blurts out, can I take you to the ball? Then this idea was originally put in his head by Susanna earlier that day. Belly doesn't have a date, and Susanna wanted to make sure she did have one. And it's evident to everybody that for the longest time, Conrad has been Belly's Prince Charming, so it would mean a lot to her. At least that's what Susanna thought. So she put in his head, hey, you need to ask Belly to the ball. And Conrad pushed back initially, but... Here he is, asking her to the ball. But Belly is so taken aback, she just says, I'll, I'll think about it. She gets a much welcome distraction when the doorbell rings and it's Taylor. And Taylor is definitely on Team Jeremiah. She's done with Conrad. So she's going to push Belly to hooking up with the younger brother. She definitely does not want Belly going to the ball with Conrad. Before Belly can decide, though, they have to head off to the tournament. Before the tournament does kick off, there is a bit of an awkward interaction with Taylor, Steven, Shayla. And it's cordial, but it is still very awkward because Taylor still has feelings for Steven. Shayla knows what she did. But Taylor seems to respect Steven and Shayla's relationship, and she tells Steven, you guys look cute together. And then she walks off to team up with her partner. While all the teams get ready... Conrad has to break the news to Nicole that he won't be going to the debutante ball with her. He used the excuse that his mom is forcing him to ask Belly, when in reality, he does want to actually go with Belly. But Nicole understands it is a tough situation that Belly currently finds herself in with no date. So she says, yeah, that, that, that's fine. A couple of minutes later, the tournament kicks off. And at first, Belly and Taylor are killing it. But then Taylor has an ankle injury, and I'm using air quotes for that one because she didn't really injure her ankle. She did it purposely so that Belly would have to have Jeremiah as a teammate. And it works, at least at first. Jeremiah and Belly pick up right where Taylor and Belly left off. They continue to steamroll the competition until they come across these wannabe professional volleyball players, and they are getting hammered. At one point, they're down 17-7, to and Belly makes the call to replace Jeremiah with Conrad because she really, really needs to win this tournament. 
And with Conrad's help, she does. Susanna runs up to the both of them. She's got the trophy in hand. She's really excited because that's a team she wanted to win. And she makes mention that the two make a really good team together. But then she turns to Conrad and says, did you ask her yet? And Belly says, ask me what? And Susanna says, to be your escort for the ball. I told him he had to ask you since it was taking you so long to decide. And Belly is crushed. She thought that Conrad asked her because he wanted to ask her. And not because he was being guilted by his mom. So while she puts on a strong face, she's definitely hurt. But as she's leaving, Nicole invites her and Taylor to a party on her dad's boat. And Belly thinks that maybe that could be the distraction she needs to stop thinking about this whole fiasco. Later that day, as Taylor and Belly walk towards the boat, they start talking about the situation, about how Conrad has been forced to take her to the ball by his mom. And for Taylor, this is further proof about why she should be hooking up with Jeremiah and not be focusing on Conrad. In fact, she went so far as to make a finsta regarding Belly and Jeremiah's relationship. It's called Go Team Jelly. It's a little uncomfortable that it already has seven likes and it's been active for all of like an hour. Belly, however, is concerned that if she were to get in a relationship with Jeremiah, she would still have feelings for his brother. And Taylor says, look, a piece of me is always going to belong to Steven, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to allow myself to fall for somebody else. The girls then arrive at the boat, and it is a massive boat. But they aren't the only ones. You've got all the Deb girls except for Shayla. She's hanging out with Steven. And they start playing the game, put her finger down if you kiss the boy, put her finger down if you've done this. The thing is, every question that's being asked, Belly has ten fingers still up. And some of them are kind of uncomfortable questions, like... Have you ever had sex? Have you ever been a third base, second base? It's a little embarrassing for Belly. So Taylor, being a good friend, says, well, put a finger down if you've ever hooked up with Jeremiah Fisher. And all of a sudden, no one's focused on the fact that Belly has barely done anything. They're focused on the fact that Belly is hooking up with one of the hottest guys in Cousins. They immediately want all the details. But Belly says there's not really much to tell. They hooked up, and that's about it. They're really good friends. And Nicole admits that for a while she thought there was something between Belly and Conrad, but turns out she just had the wrong brother. The conversation then turns to skinny dipping, which is something that Belly definitely hasn't done. And there's that local lake that Cleveland took Laurel to, and it's well known, and all the girls head there. As Gigi is getting undressed with most of the Marty in the water, she hears somebody's phone go off, and she sees that it's Conrad texting, so she says, Nicole, Conrad's texting you right now. When Nicole swims over, it wasn't her phone. It was Belly's phone. And she reads the message. And both Belly and Taylor don't even notice that all the girls are suddenly getting out of the water. They're taking Taylor and Belly's clothes. And they're getting in their car and they're leaving. They just, they notice too late. And it comes just after a time where Taylor was telling Belly, yeah, I guess your friends are pretty cool. But then after this stunt, she's singing a much different tune. Belly, though, realizes why they left when she reads the text message from Conrad. Basically says, look, I didn't ask you because my mom was making me. I asked you because I wanted to take you. So while that's kind of exciting for Belly, they do need to figure out a way to get home because they now have no clothes. The good news for them is there's a boat tarp not too far away that they're going to cover themselves with and try to walk to civilization. As for Nicole, she has to go to confront Conrad who's at a massive party at Liam's house. Liam is the kid whose dad was running the poker game. Steven won him a bunch of money. Yeah, this kid's loaded. This party's an absolute rager. Conrad and Steven showed up together, but they quickly split off. Steven headed down to Liam's poker game, which did not go his way, and the money is ticking up for the buy-in. Steven's quickly losing it. As for Conrad... He's kind of walking through this party in a trance because right before Steven did leave for that poker game, he mentioned how Shayla had a theory that Belly was hooking up with Jeremiah, which Steven just threw to the side. He didn't believe it. But for Conrad, a lot of that is starting to make sense. That's what actually prompted him to text Belly in the first place. He ends up running into Jeremiah at the party who shows up late, but they don't breach the topic. Jeremiah actually asks him, have you noticed that mom's been acting weird lately? She's been tired. It's weird. And Conrad brushes it to the side like it's no big deal, like it's normal. 
Their conversation breaks up when Nicole enters the house very angry, demanding to talk to Conrad in private. And she tells Conrad that she knows everything. She knows that she was lied to about the whole belly situation. She saw the text. And she's upset because she had pushed off other advances from other guys and she was waiting for Conrad to figure out his crap, but it never happened and she wasted all that time. He apologizes, owning up to everything, but she doesn't accept it. She just goes in the car, grabs Belly and Taylor's clothes and hands it to him saying, your friends are going to need this. That's when Conrad gets in his car to go find where Belly and Taylor are. But what he doesn't know is Belly had called up Jeremiah to do the same thing, pick them up. So they both arrive at the exact same time. The girls then quickly change and Taylor gets in the car with Conrad while Belly gets in the car with Jeremiah. Their car ride takes a little bit longer to get home though because they start hooking up and Belly decides that the next time she plays put a finger down and they ask have you gotten a second base she's going to be able to put a finger down because she lets Jeremiah feel her up. Belly though gets home she goes to bed but she wakes up to a text message in the middle of the night and it's from Conrad asking her if she's awake. She goes downstairs and meets him outside, and he wants to apologize, but also he wants to give her the necklace that he bought for her. He's finally starting to realize that there's competition for Belly in this war. He's not the only option anymore. He doesn't want to lose her. He gets really close to kissing her, but she pulls back and says, Sorry, it's too late. You had your chance. And then she just leaves him, standing there alone. And finally, in the season finale, it is the day of the ball ellie is going to be taking jeremiah because she didn't have a date and now they're kind of hooking up so it only made sense but to everybody else it's a shock because jeremiah always said that he would never do one of these things so the fact that belly got him to do it everyone's thrilled except conrad he's kind of looking at it like a chance that he squandered but he will be going he'll be escorting his mom belly needs to get going because she has to get ready the boys and everybody else, they can kind of hang back for a little bit. And Belly is going to get to drive herself, which is a big deal. But before she does leave, Conrad pulls her aside and says, for what it's worth, Jeremiah is the right choice. And Belly says, yeah, I know. She goes outside to the car, but Jeremiah is already outside. And they do have a small conversation about how this is probably going to be a little bit awkward. Her walking into that room with all the girls that know what happened between her and Conrad, it's probably like a deer walking into a lion's den she's not really looking forward to it but she's gonna have to face it anyway and then when she goes to leave they kiss which normally wouldn't be a big deal but steven is just returned home from visiting shayla he lost all his money in that poker game and he had to go hat in hand back to shayla and say i'm sorry i can't afford a tux and shayla who is very pissed off has to bail him out with one of her dad's Steven thought the last 24 hours couldn't get any worse, but now he's looking at Jeremiah kiss his sister. He is completely grossed out. Turns out Shayla was right all along. There was something going on between these two. He waits for the kiss to end for Jeremiah to go in the house to get Belly's side of things. Kind of. Really what he does is he accosts her. He wants to know all the details, but then again, he doesn't want to know all the details. He's just weirded the hell out. Steven points out that Jeremiah is like family, so... Her hooking up with him affects way more people than just her. And she says, Stephen, I know, but you don't get a say in who I date. And she's extremely proud of herself for that answer. And she gets in the car and she heads off to the ball. Stephen then goes in and talks to Jeremiah about things. And Jeremiah is really apologetic because the situation between him and Belly kind of just happened. And while Stephen probably wants to punch him, he can't because Jeremiah is like a brother to him. And he just needs to get his head around the situation. He never expected this. As for Belly, she does arrive at the ball. She starts to get ready with the other girls. It is a little bit awkward because the only one that talks to her is Shayla. And Shayla knows about the situation. She heard all about it. So she sits Belly down right next to Nicole. And she says, you guys should really talk. And they do. They talk the situation out. Belly apologizes. But as she tells Nicole, Conrad never liked me. He liked the idea of me liking him. That's what he liked. Nicole handles the situation really well. She tells Belly, it's not your fault that Conrad's kind of a fuck boy. But you're kind of a fuck girl too. I mean, Cam, Conrad, Jeremiah. Playing with a lot of people's hearts, Belly. Belly, however, swears that she is over Conrad. And Nicole kind of just shakes her head and says, 
Yeah, nobody just gets over their first love. The two girls then prepare to get ready for the ball, and hours later, the guests start to arrive. For Susanna, this is a moment. I mean, both her boys are attending this thing. Steven's going as well. The kids are growing up, and next year, it's not going to be the same because Conrad's going off to college. And she jokes around about the fact that it might be the last summer that they're all together because only Laurel and her know the truth. At least, that's what she thinks. And for Laurel to hear that, it's tough. To hear her friend be so cavalier about the fact that she's dying and she's holding it in and the boys don't know. Once again, at least that's what they think. The boys then head inside to get ready. The adults head to cocktail hour. And for Laurel, she invited a date. It's going to shock you folks, she invited Cleveland. But it turns out John, her ex, the kid's dad, he showed up as well. But he showed up without his girlfriend. He makes an excuse that she couldn't come, but now you've got the three of them talking, and it's a little bit awkward for Cleveland because Laurel and her ex-husband, John, are very cordial with one another. But it puts him in a weird spot. He's, like, the new guy. It does, however, give Cleveland an opportunity to meet Stephen for the first time, who he's heard a lot about. And when Cleveland mentions that Stephen wants to go to Princeton, Stephen's a little sheepish on talking about it because his parents have always wanted him to stay in state, which is Pennsylvania. But Laurel cuts him off and says, if you get into Princeton, we'll figure out a way to do it, which is a big relief for Stephen. And I can relate. I remember when I got into Harvard and my parents just wouldn't let me go because they couldn't afford the tuition. That's when I decided to become a YouTuber. Anyway, Stephen has to head off to actually get dressed. He just wanted to say hi to his dad. And it's he, Jeremiah, and Conrad all in the back getting ready and talking about the fact that they didn't really hang out this summer too much. And they regret it. They all had other things going on. Stephen and Jeremiah had jobs. Conrad had whatever Conrad was doing. But the summer's winding down, and they want to rectify that. So they decide to go on a fishing trip the next day. They're going to finally try to spend a little more time together before this summer wraps up. After the plans are arranged, Conrad has to say goodbye to escort his mom back in. There's a lot of pomp and circumstance with this thing. And that includes the introductions of the girls with their escorts. And for Belly, she looks great. A little while later, Stephen comes out as well. But Laurel misses everybody after that. Because one of the ceremonial things is for the girl to walk up and give the mom their bouquet of flowers. And as Susanna is smelling hers, Laurel's looking over at her, knowing that this will be the last time. And she just can't. She has to walk out. It's something that everybody notices, and it's pretty weird behavior. John rushes after her to see if she's okay, because John knows what's going on with Susanna, and Laurel tells him in private that this summer she's really going to need John's help watching the kids, because she's going to be spending a lot of time in Boston taking care of her best friend. She mentions how she really hopes Victoria, John's girlfriend, is okay with kids being around, but that's when John lets her know that him and Victoria broke up, so that won't be an issue. He does, though, give her some unsolicited advice that she needs to wrap her head around the fact that her best friend is not going to be here very much longer. And it's a really tough pill for Laurel to swallow. But their conversation gets interrupted by Jeremiah, who overheard a little bit of the conversation. He didn't hear the part about his mom dying, but he knows that something's going on with his mom. He knows that the conversation had to do with his mom. He came out just to get Laurel so that she would see one of these dance routines, but... Now he's way more concerned about what exactly they were discussing. He, however, has to put it aside because he does have to do this dance routine. It's with all the escorts. They do this like it's, I mean, I would say Magic Mike, but with way more tame and all the clothes stay on. Steven was actually kind of leading the way. So when it ends, Shayla runs up and congratulates him, but they get some unwanted guests from Trevor and Liam. Liam mentions how Shayla looked as beautiful as she did when they went to prom together, and that's something that Steven didn't really know. So now he's in a pretty bad mood because these guys also took all his money. They kind of start making fun of the fact that his tuxedo doesn't fit. He mentions how, well, he couldn't afford another one because they took all his money. And that's when he says, well, yeah, I mean, why would you know? He gets all defensive, and they offer to give the money back, but he says, no, you guys want it fair and square, and he walks away with a lot of attitude. His insecurity, though, is getting the best of him. When it comes time to actually dance with Shayla, he mentions the fact that he didn't know that they were a thing. And she says, Steven, yeah, we went to prom together, but then he got way too clingy. 
But Steven's insecurity is the fact that he isn't like any of these kids. He grew up in a suburb and not even a nice one. Which, I'm going to tell you right now, personally, I take offense to because I play hockey in that suburb. And it's a very nice suburb. Westchester, PA has a lot going for it. High property taxes, good school district. Try getting a house with 1,000 square feet under $400,000. It's going to be costly. Anyway, I digress. Because he drives a Hyundai Civic, he's a little insecure. And Shayla has to remind him, Stephen, I chose you. I didn't choose them. I had them. I chose you. And all of a sudden, Stephen's mood completely changes. Oh, yeah, that's right. She did choose me. So that's what Stephen did after the escort performance. Jeremiah, he went to go get answers. While the adults were mingling and having drinks, Jeremiah took his mom's phone and figured if he snooped through it, he would find out some details. And boy, did he ever. He finds out everything. The fact that the cancer is back, the fact that there is an experimental trial, but mainly the fact that his mom is dying. The thing is, he is so focused on that that he misses the big dance with Belly. No one can figure out where Jeremiah is. It's really concerning because the dance comes and Belly's all alone on the dance floor with no one to dance with. And that's when Conrad seizes his moment. He stands up, and just like the Prince Charming that Belly always hoped he would be, he really becomes that. He stands in for his brother, and the two dance it up. About halfway through the dance, Jeremiah comes in, and he sees that his brother slash competition is dating with Belly. The first thing that Susanna asks is, where were you? And he makes up an excuse that his stomach's been hurting since he ate. But as soon as the dance is over, Jeremiah runs up to his brother and says, hey, we need to talk. It's about mom. Conrad tries to push it to later, but Jeremiah says, no, man, we need to talk now. And Conrad's cavalier nature about the situation tells Jeremiah that Conrad knew this entire time. And it's worth mentioning that as those two are having that conversation, Cleveland is telling Laurel that he knows about Susanna's cancer because Conrad told him. And Laurel is completely shocked that Conrad knew. But then there's a big commotion. And that's because Jeremiah punches Conrad right in the face. And it doesn't have to do with Belly. It has to do with the fact that Conrad knew this entire time and didn't tell his brother what was going on with their mom. Susanna runs up to put a stop to the fight. And once Conrad stands up and collects himself, the two brothers have to let Susanna know that they know about the cancer. They know it's back. That's when Belly finds out. That's when Stephen finds out. And the whole night is ruined. For Belly, Stephen, and Laurel, they spend most of the night crying because they know that Susanna is not getting better and this is the last summer that they're probably ever going to have with her. Their second mom. For the boys... They spend most of the night trying to convince their mom to go through this experimental trial. At first, she pushes back. She doesn't want to do it. She's accepted her fate. But with her two boys begging her to stay, how can she say no? She eventually gives in. She'll go through the trial. A little while later, Susanna goes downstairs. She meets with Laurel in the kitchen. And she gives her the good news that she'll be going through the trial. And the mood in the house changes. It no longer goes from a quasi-wake It's more of a normal night. Everybody at the dinner table, everybody eating. Early the next morning, Belly decides to go out to the beach, and there's Conrad. And Conrad is beaming. He then apologizes for just being crappy all summer, but Belly says, well, you were going through this alone. I mean, I don't blame you for that. I just wish you would have told me. He says, I wanted to a couple times, but I just couldn't. He then says, there's so many things I want to say to you, but she cuts him off and says, don't, not now. And he stands up and says, why? And she tells him, you really need somebody right now, and I don't want to be the kind of person who takes advantage of that. But he says, I don't just need somebody. I need you. And Bellied says, I don't want you to need me. I want you to want me. And he says, I do want you. And then he finally kisses her. Yes, folks, 22 hours earlier, she was making out with his brother, but now she's making out with him. And that is the end of season one of The Summer I Turn Pretty. Thank you so much again. This part of the recap. I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing to my channel. Hit thumbs up if you like this video. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. And tell me in the comment section, are you Team Jeremiah or Team Conrad or Team Cam Cameron? I'm kind of Team Cam Cameron. I got to be honest. That, that weirdo, he, he stole my heart in the three episodes he was in it. But either way, just 
Throw it in the comments section. Let the ads run. Give it to your friends. All that good stuff. I'll see you for season two.